Good afternoon, uh, dear judges, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mao representing the Guanghua team uh, with Li Chong. Today we would like to introduce the page idea. Uh, very luckily, uh, we are the A4 paper, so we can be the number one to present. <laughs> can we have somebody give us a hand? <laughs> All right, so the paper media, uh, the Chinese name is Zhishang Fengxing, and we would like to f promote the precise marketing uh, to China market, especially in Beijing market. And our target advertisement is focusing on the A4 paper free A4 paper we provide to the small and medium-sized companies. Before, we would like to introduce uh, the summary of the whole presentation. The precise marketing is we want to ask one core question, how to send advertisement to the targeted audiences in an accurate way. We provide the free A4 copy paper to small companies by adding 30% of the advertisement paper with them and that the advertisement can reach the hands of the targeted audiences directly. The Page Ideas has the database, which is our competitive advantage, with accurate company's profile. And we try to collect those profile, trying to achieve the profitable goal. And the Page Idea solution can reach more than 33K companies in Beijing. Last, we would like to introduce you about a financial project indicates the profit pro profitable outlook of the whole project. And our page idea has around 80% profit margin for this project from the initial finance estimation. We're facing one current problem. We have so many channels to know the information on the world. However, too many channels means we must condense this information as precisely as possible. That's why we're trying to help people to know things effectively and efficiently. And we offer those people with purchasing power in small and medium companies. We're trying to put the A4 paper on their tables directly. All right, too many choices, but too limited times. So we would like to shorten the time for the key buyers to make the decision. This is the innovation of the customer's experiences. We're trying to put the advertisement to our potential customers more clearly and to use the exact picture on the free paper, as judges can see uh, on hand. We show the sample, and we had already delivered to three key companies, including Dell, Hospital, and including Beijing Bank. Now, we would like to understand what kind of media can, put, can be put on the customer's desk, and the customer has high acceptance. Here is the solution. We can help the dream comes true. The answer is FO paper. FO paper, right, on the table. And the specification of FO paper is 100 grams multiply 100 pages for one pack. We would like to use the innovative papers for 26 pounds, which is 100 grams instead of the previous 20 pounds, 60 grams old paper. We use that high quality paper for our customers free. 30% advertisement and 70% with the white paper to the small companies because they have a budget concern and they have their uh, overheads concern. So we try to help them the blank paper, 70%. Okay, the function is here, you can use including you can use the paper as the airplane, paper airplane if you want. Okay, we would like to deliver to the focus play places and the location is CBD and some other main business district in Beijing. We're not only doing this, we also have the follow-up actions, including telephone interview, survey, acceptance survey, and the questionnaire, understanding customers' needs and wants. For example, I asked Li Chong about where are we going to dinner later on? And here is the logo you can see from the low side. How does this look? This is the detail we focus on and we're trying to promote to our customers and save budget for them and to achieve the target marketing. 
Here is our main companies. We have 1.5K office buildings in Beijing, and we also have a 100% penetration rate of the Class A buildings and 70% coverage of the all office buildings in Beijing. As I mentioned, overheads is what the customers care about most. Related to the database we had already introduced before, we used the uh, profile for the confidential purpose and we're trying to use them effectively. And one example is the Beijing Bank example. We're trying to deliver this message, the Apple paper, to, the, to our customer, and the Beijing Bank have more than 1,000 uh, return rate. They have high acceptance rate. And so far, they think it has high uh, interaction and frequent exposure with our customers. The last one is the financial analysis regarding our whole profit will be more than 1229118 USD dollars, while the revenue uh, minus the total cost. Here's our total uh, introduction and presentation. Thank you very much, A4 Paper. Uh, our second team from UIBE is Apollo. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to our castle. This is our castle, named Asian Castle Restaurant. And uh, what is this castle? Because uh, this is the castle where our green life starts. And because we can provide the most healthy food to our customers and we can get profitable results to our shareholders. And what else can this castle can provide? It also can provide a delighted career to our employees, as well as deliver the concept of environmental protection. So what and how can make these things happen? We can't get this thing happen. We can't get this thing happen by producing the most healthy and delicious food in the extraordinary place decoration with full of culture uh, environment. Um, and you know, to discuss the uh, per, uh, environment, environmental protections. In addition, our service is excellent. Our price is affordable. And, and uh, you know, we have a very strong team here and uh, I am one of four founders uh, who is going to set up this business and by uh, uh, investing one million RMB. This one million RMB will support a restaurant of 220 square meters with under a two year leasing contract and we will have 24 tables in our restaurant, which produce 96 tables. So, welcome to our region restaurant, and I'm sure you will experience the most healthy food and get the very best service and share your valuable ideas of protecting the environmental, the environments. So here is, is my uh, specific plan. Yes, let's look into the demand and supply side. We surprisingly found there is a huge demand in Beijing area, and but a short supply here. Currently uh, in Beijing, there are 24 veggie restaurants, but in, the, uh, in our targeted area, none of them are serving uh, for veggie food. So we'll be the first one uh, to penetrate this local market. And the market trend shows us uh, it's in an increasing rate uh, by 77% uh, year on year. So that we will, uh, we will target ourselves uh, into three segments. 
In the lunch time, in the working days, we offer to the work employees the set meal, and the dinner time for the uh, uh, business entertainment, and uh, uh, weekend and holidays will uh, offer the party and lecture, healthy lectures. And then we targeted our uh, most uh, profitable uh, customer ba uh, base is uh, the business, <laughs> business entertainment. To implement this business plan, we have a strong team here. Uh, most of them have 15 to 20 years of working experience in the, all the key actions, uh, key functions. So with totally uh, 27 faculties, and uh, with our yeah, uh, table occupation assumption, uh, we'll gradually uh, develop the uh, table occupation from 30% to 200% throughout the upcoming three years. And we targeted our growth margin at 20%. So what is more important here is location, location, and again, location. So totally 24 restaurants, all of them we found, surprisingly, uh, based on uh, north of Beijing, but we will re uh, locate our restaurant in the south. We have uh, competitive services, and it makes us to be uh, as, uh, accessible to a large customer base, actually. and. Uh, if you ask me how we can approach this uh, uh, customer base, we have the three-phase plan uh, from establish the brand awareness to expand the customer base and eventually acquire the loyal customers. So to tell you a secret, this is not only something about the healthy food and service, but also it's a healthy cash flow and business. We found in the 13 months time, we can meet the break-even profitable. Okay. So in short, forward to, to, to the audience here, we love this company. We have a dream to build a green life, and uh, we have the feasible business plan to run, and we have a passion to run. So you are always welcome to be our guest and be our partner to run the business together. 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 Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Apollo. Uh, the third group is uh, from the University of Maryland Smith School of Business, Charity Card. Supermarket, we're gonna put our charity card identifier on the shelves where your product stands. The identifier is gonna tell, talk to your customer, our charity card holder, that when they purchase your product, they're gonna donate the money to a charity, but without spending any single penny. It's a really great incentive for them to choose your product, and you also benefit on your corporate social responsibility. <laughs> How good is that? Sounds good, but. Will the customers really care? Wait, listen to your customers. Wow, that sounds great. I love to use it. I love to use it. That means I don't have to spend lots of time choosing among many identical products on the shelves. Man, that makes my life easier. And of course, I prefer brands that contribute to the society. But how exactly does it work? 
It's easy. Just get your free charity card from any participating grocery store. Then select the charity card products by looking for the logo on the shelf. <coughs> charity card, card donates, uh, helps you donate items and tracks all your purchases online so you know how much you've donated as well as where that money's going. Wow, that really solves the problem. I never had spare time and extra money to donate. But with the charity card, I'm making a donation with every purchase. Wow. Well, charity card makes donation as easy as buying a bottle of water. So we just saw an example of how a charity card has the ability to influence the consumer at the point when they're making a decision. Let's take a look at the marketing process. And I'll start with our customer, the brand companies. We're focusing particularly on those companies which cannot be easily differentiated from their competitors. Companies that make bottled water, for instance. Currently, we've targeted and identified and gained the interest of several uh, companies that are engaged in socially responsible pr um, projects. These are companies include like uh, Pepsi and uh, Unilever. Moving along, let's look at our partners, the supermarkets. Um, since we have the ability to improve customer perception, we haven't had any difficulty uh, building a, 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 a partnership with these uh, supermarkets. And in fact, we can also leverage our interest with the brand companies to gain access to their systems and integrate with their software. Looking at the customers, we've also seen already how the customers have the ability to make a free donation. As well, we have transparency. We have a third party credibility from our website, which is very important so, they, so customers can see where their money is going. Finally, we're providing value to charities and relief agencies. We have the ability to build new relationships between brand companies and charities. We also have the ability to build upon relationships that already exist. So let's look at the potential. According to our market research and our customer survey, we've seen that over 90% of Chinese respondents are willing to change their buying habits if they know that their purchases are going to go to a charitable cause. This is incredible, especially when you think 47.5 um, of our Chinese respondents are willing to even pay more if they know that their uh, purchase is going to go to a, a charitable cause as well. Um, if you think about that, there's been a continual increase in donations within China for nonprofit organizations. As well, there's right now very strong uh, tax uh, government that the Chinese government is offering uh, tax incentives to, um, for companies to make altruistic uh, donations. So at Charity Card, we're providing value to companies for something that they're already incentivized to do. Looking at Beijing alone, there's 4.8 million households spending 14.5 million RMB, uh, excuse me, billion RMB on things like uh, soap, shampoo. They're spending money on things that cannot be replaced by technology, and these are repeat purchases. In the financial projection, we can see, we expect we have two multinational companies and a local co uh, company as our partner at the beginning of the year. And we expect to gain two lo uh, local companies and five international companies in each year. So as you can see on the charge, we will break even in 2013, and we will have the earning of seven million in 2015. So we recognize there is competition already, but there is no one out there who is taking uh, social impact and point of sale marketing and combining the two. Um, as well, if you, if you look at everyone within this, uh, within this chart, no one is providing value to, across, um, to everyone within the value chain. So this is who we are, and we just want to say, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our fourth finalist from Guangua is the City Faces. Still lots of opportunity.
And good afternoon. Uh, today we bring a website, thecityphysics.com, and uh, a real website for foreigners in China. And before everything, I would like to ask you some questions. Have you met the situation when you are in, uh, when you are in China? Just uh, everywhere is Chinese, and uh, you don't know uh, where to go, where to buy, and where to have fun. And do you want to have a, a local life, just uh, like uh, 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 any uh, native, not like a fool? Yeah, this is a question, yeah? And uh, I told you, there's over uh, 24 million foreigners each year in China have the same problem as yours. And their consuming is amazing. Uh, it's, a huge, uh, it's a huge market. It's a huge market, over 34 billion US dollars. And so you will see, but there's a, there's a huge gap between the foreigners and the local business. So what do we do is helping them to find each other, to cross the gap and find each other and fit each other. And uh, so far, there are some of our competitors, uh, they are magazines, but we are quite different from them. And uh, we are new media, we are independent website, and uh, we have a different functions, uh, target, uh, target users, and uh, uh, marketing strategies. And now, that is uh, about our website. On this website, we provide life information services, including business pages searching, promotions, and user community. As a user, you can invite and meet friends here and see their consuming lists, reviews, and life guides by their feeds. Imagine that one of your friends from Korea consumed in a Korean restaurant yesterday and wrote a review, delicious Wi-Fi offered, the waitresses are hot. And this feed can be seen on your homepage. Is it helpful when you go out for dinner? For business owners, we give them a solution to get more customers. Uh, all the business pages can be searched and followed, and any important information such as new product introduction and promotions can be broadcasted to every single follower with a low cost. Next, our team. And I am Joseph, I have over se uh, seven years I'm running a translation company as a founder and a general manager. And this is Bo, have over five years in internet company as a, a product director. And our team has a very strong net, a local network. And uh, we are good at uh, cost, uh, cost controlling. I'm sorry. And uh, this is uh, our marketing strategy. And uh, this is uh, a website, uh, users and uh, customers. They boost, uh, they encourage each other and boost each other. Uh, so now I, I would answer how do we, uh, how we uh, get users. We have uh, three ways to get a user. The first is our channel strategy. We have uh, cooperated with some travel agencies, uh, foreign student uh, fire offices in universities, uh, communities, foreign communities, uh, communities, and international companies, and uh, some language schools. They will bring us at least uh, 8,000 users at the beginning, and even more in the future. The user, we call that the user self-encouraging. People can get scores uh, uh, by resisting, uh, inviting friends, or writing reviews. Uh, and, and then they can exchange the scores to uh, some coupons, some coupons, just like that. And um, the third is uh, we call it And so uh, then, what can we offer customers? We have uh, three kinds of products. The first is the basic one, it's uh, just like advertisement and ranking sponsors and uh, promotion. And the second we call value added product. Uh, you know, the business owner can post their self introduction free, but the translation and the editing are charged. And this is what I'm doing now, and, and this is our advantage. Uh, the third is in order product. Uh, we, we, we can offer some uh, in order product for, uh, for universities, companies. So you will see we can offer products in a flexible way, in, a flexible way, in single or in pairs. And uh, we will reach our break even point at third quarter uh, with expected revenue about uh, uh, tens of thousands US dollars. And this is our expansion. 
uh, we are a city-oriented uh, website, so you can see uh, in the future, in, in the future, and uh, uh, at first we just focus on some big cities. So then we can expand from uh, Beijing, Shanghai to other cities in, in China and even in Asia. And with regions expands, our target user can expand from foreigners to Chinese and foreigners. And the third is category expands. Some categories just like hotel is very suitable for uh, to, uh, to do the business to customers uh, uh, module. So that's our categories expands. Now that's co uh, content expanding. And at last, you can uh, visit our uh, website in short future by your mobile phone. So that is all uh, about our website. And today, we bring some coupons for you guys apparently here. Uh, this is a Song Dynasty restaurant, a Hu Tong restaurant, very traditional and very Chinese. We can't give any coupons to the judges. It wouldn't be... Uh... <laughs> Congratulations, that was a good pitch. Uh, our fifth team from Guanghua is New Energy. New Energy? That's amazing. I never believed that I can stand here and show our business. Um, well, I'm so lucky. Thank you. Well, um, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor for us to stand here. And as there's a time limitation, so I will focus on six questions that you may be interested in. So I don't want to uh, explain the PPT so, because it is so long. The first one is what exactly our product is. Well, generally speaking, we're producing batteries with nanotechnology on the positive electrode. Applying this new technology, the lithium iron phosphate batteries could be more durable and safe. Uh, the biggest difference between our battery and the others are that uh, we integrate a chip into a battery to monitor the state of charge and other important indicators. This could be very useful for the automobile producers and customers. The second question is, where is the chance in the market? Well, right now, the lithium iron phosphate batteries is not 100% suitable for the electric vehicles. And this becomes one of the biggest obstacles to the new energy vehicles development. Most of the largest automobile corporations are investing in R&D in LIP batteries. For example, Toyota and Panasonic set up two new battery factories for hybrid electric vehicles. Uh, and started to produce LIP batteries in uh, 2009. Well, Chinese government support the automobile industry, especially the new energy vehicles. In the 12th five-year plan, it is clearly demonstrated that in order to meet the energy saving and emission reduction goal, Chinese government will strongly implement the low carbon economy, uh, uh, economy policies. Some policies have been already made public, including the export tax re rebate policy and the allowance on the new energy vehicles. The third question is, who are we? Our CEO, Su Qin, has been working in this industry for eight years and has rich experience and relationships in especially marketing and sales. And another partner who is not listed in the, f in the former PBT is the owner of the pa uh, patent on our core technology which is one of the leading technologies in China and also advanced in the world. As he's a 20 years friend of our CEO and they had been worked together for three years in a battery company, our R&D will be quite reliable. And also, we are a group of motivated, aggressive, and well-educated person. Now, the, the fourth question is, what are our biggest advantages? Well, the first is our nanotechnology apply on the batteries. This will ensure our battery to be better quality and cost effectiveness. The second is the timing. We decided to start up our company and look for VC at this time because it's the best timing to build up entry barriers. 
the traditional charging station for new energy vehicles need five hours to charge a car and at least 10 minutes to charge in 50% uh, uh, of the battery in the fast way, uh, which would reduce the battery's life. So um, the government, it seems that the government's solution is to change the battery instead of, instead of charging. In order to let this business model applicable, government, uh, government will purchase the batteries uh, instead, of the, instead of the consumers or the automobile pro pro producers. And uh, um, the government relationship and the quality of our battery would be, would be the key to win the government orders. Under this business model, the first battery producers win the order, will build up great entry barriers to the others as the government would prefer to keep the battery supply stable. The fifth question is, why do we need investors now? Um, Chinese battery companies had some success in mobile, and, uh, mobile phone and notebook, bat uh, notebook batteries these years. But in this mature um, market, it is difficult to, for us to get rid of the role of a traditional OEM partners. Most of the people uh, believe that the new energy automobile is the biggest chance to the, ba uh, to the battery industry. This new market will provide chances for newcomers like us to enter the, and the market for, uh, of the batteries might be reshuffled. Uh, to us, it's a great chance to build up our brand with the image of high technology. The, mo the money will be uh, used to, supply, uh, to support our R&D promotion and sales channel building. And the sixth question and the last question is what is our biggest change or risk, a challenge or risk? Well, the first is the protection of the intellectual property. Uh, it's always a challenge in China. So our solution is to keep investing in R&D and choose the partner and recruit the worker carefully. Our core competence can be, but cannot only be the technology. And the second is the low price strategy of small companies. Our solution is to pr produce reliable products and build up our brand. Under our technology, we have confidence in producing high-end products compared to the existing local battery companies. Third is the risk on the policy. All of the information now shows that Chinese government will fully support the new energy, uh, new energy industry. If the local government does not execute the policy in time, for example, if the charging stations grow slowly, the new energy vehicles cannot grow as rapidly as we uh, predicted. So uh, we, we can still, if that happens, we can still earn by OEM, doing the traditional OEM partner things. And for the above reason, we believe that our business will be successful and we are willing to get instruction and suggestions for you, uh, from you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, the final team presenting is from the uh, Smith School of Business. Veggie Cool. Before we begin, just a couple of things I want to say. Um, on my behalf and on my team's behalf, I really want to thank uh, Luke University for inviting us and hosting us. This has been a fantastic experience, so thank you very much. The other thing I also want to mention before we begin is that we had, or we have, uh, a fourth team member uh, who was not able to make it on this trip in the last minute uh, because uh, she fractured her leg. And uh, just wanted to make so your, your well wishes to her. We, we want Respected judges, friends, good afternoon. We're excited today to talk to you about Veggie Koo. The Indian farmer, one of the poorest people on this planet, deep in debt with a single source of income with less than five acres of land, he earns less than a dollar a day, 
and knows that this year another 8,000 farmers will take their lives. But we ask, why? Because almost half his produce goes to waste because there is no refrigeration. Every time he tries to get his produce to the market, he has to go through five or six layers of corrupt middlemen, and he's never informed of what the true market value of his produce actually is. And most of all, he has nowhere to store his produce. He is working in a market that is highly fragmented, inefficient, and corrupt. Now, in the market today, on the retail side, the fresh produce is sold at five times what the farmers are paid. Five times. And we might think that a majority of this revenue is taken up by retailers, right? You'll be surprised to know that retailers take only 11% of the total revenue. Majority of it is actually taken up by these five layers of corrupt middlemen we talked about. So what if? What if we made the supply chain more efficient and fair. Farmers could make twice as much revenue, and retailers could increase their profit margins up to 20%. Veggie Cool is the solution. Veggie Cool will purchase farm uh, produce from farmers, store them in cold storage facilities, and deliver them to retail markets in the city. This will eliminate middlemen and also reduce waste in the process. Vegicool will partner with Yan Taimun, a Chinese cold storage company, to construct and maintain cold storage facilities to improve the quality of the produce and to assure that we are upkeeping the quality of the produce while we are delivering it back to our retail units. With Yan Taimun, uh, it has about 50 years of experience in helping China build its cold storage facilities with about 39 patents and uh, having opportunities and worldwide spread in about 58 countries, including India, Yang Tai Moon's technology has, has been proven to work in all sorts of environments. Vegicool and Yang Tai Moon will deliver immense value to both farmers and the retailers. To the farmers, not only do we increase the lifespan of their produce, but we also offer them a better price for their produce and using technology provide constant feedback on what's in demand in the retail markets. With this knowledge, the farmers are now empowered to improve their crop quality and better plan for the next season. And for the retailers, a strategic partnership with Vegicool provides them a better quality of produce, all graded and packed. We eliminate their overheads and operating costs and provide them an economic benefit through higher margins. So our initial target market is my hometown, Vizag, in the state of Andhra Pradesh, India. Vizag contributes about 3% of the state's total production capacity, and Andhra Pradesh contributes about $4 billion worth of produce annually. Within the next few years, we plan to expand beyond the Vizag region to capture a larger share of the market. As you can see, the potential in the market is enormous. <coughs> and as per our initial estimates to capture this enormous potential, we estimate that we would need about 5,000 metric tons of cold storage capacity and about eight to 10 trucks of cold storage, making about three trips per, three trips per week to our retail clients. And Vegicool is in a very strong position to address this market. Our traditional competition is very fragmented and not in a position to innovate to match our offering. Big box retailers, such as Reliance today, and possibly Walmart in the future, are very focused on the tier one markets. Vegicool is interested in the tier two markets, which are currently untapped and have huge growth potential. But more importantly, we have a deep relationship with the farmers in the Vizag area. Swaroop here is from the farming community, and his family has invested in this community for many generations. So even if, even if our competitors decide to enter this market, our generational trust with these farmers is nearly impossible for them to replicate. So as first movers in the Vizag area, we have an enormous competitive advantage. 
We need about $400,000 to get started to build our first <coughs> facility. And with this facility, as you can see in the chart here, we expect that by the third year of production, we will be uh, about $3 million in profit. And with the prize money from today's competition, we intend to travel to India and establish and strengthen our relationships with these farmers and identify our retail partners. And with a team like this, who can say no? <laughs> Jokes aside, we do have the full trust of the farming community, and we're confident in creating a new way of storing and delivering fresh produce in India. And I hope that you can join us on this journey. Okay, uh, let's give one more round of applause to our six finalists. Uh, we're now going to ask the judges to uh, leave the room so that they can uh, deliberate and uh, pick the winners. to have a, a very successful entrepreneur who also has experience on the investment side of the house, so he's uh, very skilled on both sides of the equation, and we'd like to hear from Mr. Tony Lee. Thanks, Asha. Um, yeah, I'll do it with microphone as well. Uh, my name is Tom Lee. I'm a uh, founding and managing partner of Voyager Capital, which is a seed stage investment fund in Beijing. We focus on China, uh, seed stage, TMT, uh, technology, telco, and investment. And also, I fortunately enough to start three companies. The first one is San Francisco, and the one I'm running now is called Hangzhou, which is a uh, Business social network uh, for China. I'm really glad today. Thanks, Alshir. Thanks, Bonnie, uh, for inviting me to speak here at, the, uh, at this uh, uh, podium. I cannot begin to tell you how important it is to have an educational experience in institutions like Guanghua, like uh, Bingman. I myself came from a, a little small town, Kunming, which is you know the border of. Uh, China and Vietnam. Real education, I was lucky enough to get to MIT, did my investment banking with Merrill Lynch, and then jumped to the uh, startup world. So a school experience that opens the doors for you. That's something uh, uh, really important. What I want to talk to you about today is just some of my experience, personal experience as an entrepreneur and also as an investor in China. Now is a great time to be an entrepreneur in China for three reasons. <coughs> Number one, lots of money. Right? Everybody heard about, the, uh, heard about the expression, if there's no finance, there's no romance. So money is available. Last year, in total, VC industry raised about, about $20 billion for investment in China. Why is that? Because there's lots of opportunities. Just to put things in historical perspective. The first industrial revolution happened in 18th century in England. The British Empire put 30 million people through the industrial revolution. The second industrial revolution happened 
in 19th century United States. 300 million people jumped into the uh, second industrial revolution. Today, now, 1.3 billion people are going through the industrial revolution. They are getting into the cities. Their lives are dramatically changing because the economic power is at China's elevation. So this is a great time to be an entrepreneur in China. And the third reason is almost any sectors you look at, be that internet, new energy, uh, food, agriculture, can you hear me now? Okay, cool. I guess I just wasted you know, 10 minutes of the time. <laughs> You're just wondering what this guy is talking about without any sound. But anyway, I'll just you know, continue on. Um, uh, any industry you look at, any subcategory, you look at a structural change. Be that you know, in the internet space, 300 million people are getting online broadband connectivities. Mobile internet, 600 million people. Food, energy, clean tech. All of those are the areas that the country needs to, or needs a lot of innovation. That's the reason why today, now, is a great time to be an entrepreneur in China. So that is a good news. The bad news is entrepreneurship is actually very hard. I'll give you some statistics. For every 100 company get pitched to the VCs, one of them will get funded. You look at it, I mean, you, you can ask anybody, you know, John Doerr at Brian Perkins, Neil Shen at Sequoia China. I mean, those guys probably see 100 you know, a thousand business plans a year, and they put their money into probably ten companies. So you're looking at one in one hundred chance for a business to get funded. But that's just the beginning. For well, every company who gets funded, the survival rate after three years is about one in one hundred. You know, people, the founders got into quarrels. Business don't really go anywhere. Uh, market conditions change, anything can happen. So of those three year, uh, after those three year uh, survival rate, one in 100 companies will make it to the public market. So when you time those one, 100, 1% uh, three times, you're looking at one in a million chance. So that is a hard uh, fact. But the reality is not that bad. The reason is, along the process, entrepreneur, entrepreneurs, they build companies like you know, Microsoft, like Apple, <coughs> they go to the public market. But there's lots of entrepreneurs who will build you know, a veggie restaurant or a, uh, 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 some other you know, lifestyle business that make $10 or $20 million a year. Very comfortable life, very comfortable lifestyle. So that is um, some of the sobering truths about being an entrepreneur. And there are three questions you need to ask yourself. Why do you want to start a business? Having a business com plan competition is one thing, but put your life, your partner's life, and also you know, your family's support through three years, maybe five years, hard work, that takes some you know, really thinking before you actually do it. And my observation on entrepreneurship is this. They are either geeks, like you know, Bill Gates, before he started Microsoft, or they are dreamers, like Steve Jobs, before he started uh, Apple, or like outliners, like Jack Ma, who started Alibaba. If I can pick one character to be sort of, you know, third half of the entrepreneur, that would be a movie character. How many of you guys watched Forrest Gump? It's okay, everybody. But it's not Forrest Gump. 
is his best buddy, Baba. That guy cannot stop thinking about talking about shrimps, right? Yeah. They sit there, and that's, that's, that's only one thing you can think about. That's when you get the idea, and the idea is burning through you. You just can't get rid of it. That's when you decide you want to start a business. Another question is, who do you go business with? Of those three type of person, funders, customers, investors, who do you think is the most important to a business? Take a guess. Founders. I would say the founders. Investors come and go, right? I mean, there's always money available uh, somewhere. Customers, you can create a customer, you can find a customer. But if you don't have funders, you don't have a business. And most of the business fail is not because they do not have a good business. It's not because they are not in the right market. It's not because they lack of the liquidity. They fail because the founders can't get along with each other. You ask any VC, the company said they invested in it. So today I'm really glad to see you know, when people present, they present as a team. A team, the founders' team, is really, really important. <clears throat> so the last question is how? How do you actually have the idea, the team, and actually get it done? Creating something from nothing. <coughs> Three keys. Persuade, persist, and pivot. Persuade meaning you have to talk to your partners, your customers, your investors. Let them know your vision and how you want to do it. Persist meaning when you have challenges, you always have ways to overcome it. And pivot means you got to change your business somewhere along the way. I give you another example: EMC, the greatest data storage company in the planet. The guy who started EMC actually started selling funny chips. Along the way, he pivoted his business. Even Baidu, right? The most successful search engine in China. Robin, he started out trying to copy not Google, but Akumai. So at some point, you need to pivot. So it's really a fine point between persistence and pivoting. Now I just want to illustrate that with an entrepreneur story, um, Nicholas Lennestrom. He was just in Beijing two weeks ago, and uh, he hosted uh, an away, uh, MIT, MIT Club of Beijing. We hosted a, um, uh, a session for him, and Nicholas gave us a speech. Look at his bios. He worked 10 years, worked his way up at Palitou, which is a uh, European carrier. And then he went to the States, founded the Bazaar, the number one music downloading um, site in the States. The problem with Kazaar is he could never figure out how to make money out of it. Even worse, his team got sued by the US government. This guy cannot enter the US because of his entrepreneurship. Okay, so that you, you might end up in jail, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's how dangerous it is. But did he give up? No, he did not. He went back to Sweden, he covered up with uh, other you know, investors. He used the technology, the P P2P technology that they developed using, uh, uh, at the cover of Kazar time, and made it into Skype. So entrepreneurship is hard, but it is exciting. Look at Nicholas. Now he's sitting around the world in his 60-footer catamaran. <coughs> so now I have, I, have, I have only three more slides, so bear with me. I want to talk to you about when you start a business, there are three things that are the most important. Execution, marketing, and pitching. Execution means 
how do you turn things from zero to one? Because once you get a business going, you know, if you're making a million or two million in one way, lots of people will come and help you. You know, accounting firms, lawyers, they'll help you to run your business model, they'll help you to raise money. But how do you get from zero to one? Nobody's gonna help you at that point. The only thing you have is yourself, your partners, your families. So my advice is this, start from the end. Whenever you want to do something, think about why you want to do that. I'll give you an example. Right, if you're doing a company and you want to add a product feature, ask yourself why you want to do that. Is it because you want to have more users? Or is it because you want to have more uh, bandwidth? Or is it because you want to make it more user friendly? Start from the end and then work, way, work your way back to uh, what you want to do now. <clears throat> That's the most efficient. And the second is small, really is good. Let's be honest, right? We are not Exxon Mobil. We are not China Mobil. We cannot go out and solve a society's problem. Leave that to the government. Leave that to the uh, uh, big companies. You go out, you solve one specific problem for a particular set of customers. And hopefully, that customer will catch up and then you will you know, uh, project onto other customers. That's how a business is built. And set in incremental benchmarks to bench against yourself. Right? You have a team, you're executing. Don't try to build your own in a day. Try to build a little feature in a week. Try to sign up a customer in a month. Another question you need to ask yourself at the institution is this. You always ask yourself, okay, let's say everything's done. We have all the money, the problem is solved. Whatever product I want to build is already there. What now? You gotta to talk to customers, right? So who are they? We got, the more you understand your customers, the more likely your business will succeed, or will, be, or will succeed. Who are they? Where are they? How do you find them? Through which channel? And when you actually reach them, what kind of messages do you tell them so they can be turned on to whatever services or product that you are selling? That's why it's pitching. As I say, life is about sales, so let's see it in detail. When you're pitching to an investor, investors know that as well. So my word to pitching to a seed stage or an early stage investors is SCAR. S stands for scarcity. Why my project is unique? Why my project cannot be copied by others? Why is my project so different that I want to write you a $200,000 check? Scarcity. Second is credibility. How am I going to believe that you're going to do whatever you say I'm going to do? Because you look at the business, there are three types of risks. There is a technology risk. Can you actually build? There is a competitive risk. Okay, some other guy saw what you just built and he's 10 times stronger than you. And he's, he's going to come in and repeat your launch. What do you do? The third type of risk is market risk. Whatever you see today might change tomorrow. 
So the credibility is very important. The third is amount. How much money you need. Towards that, I, there's one advice I want to give to you, which is when you are doing your, when you are doing your financial uh, projections, budget enough salary for yourself and for your team. That is one crucial difference between entrepreneurship in China and entrepreneurship in the Silicon Valley. In the Valley, people work as hard as you know, they're getting paid in cash or in stock options. But in Beijing, you better make sure that people have enough money. Otherwise, they're going to you know, change jobs. They're not going to stay with you because stock options, they cannot take that to the supermarket and buy bread. The third is, the last one is return. Okay. How much you want to give up? If you are lucky enough to have someone to say, I want to invest in your business, my advice to you is don't think too much on how much equity I want to give up. The reason is you are so lucky that time is working for you. Right? You are in your late, late 20s, maybe early 30s. You can use that money and build a business and learn a whole lot from it. And think from, from an investor's perspective as well, right? So do not you know, argue too much about you know, how much equity I'm going to give up. So that is sort of my, uh, my remark. Thanks.